Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about ray diagrams and geometric optics. Now, this is a really simple way for you to understand geometrically where the image comes from, basically from any lens or any mirror. Really simple, and it works extremely well. If you do this on graph paper and you measure with a ruler, it will come out exactly the way it's supposed to come out. Great. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to use straight lines to find these images. We're gonna draw three principal rays. And these three rays come from the standard properties of geometric optics and of lenses. So, if the light comes in parallel to the principal axis, it goes out through the focus. If the light, that's the first one. Second one, if the light comes in through the focus, then it goes out parallel. So it's like doing this backwards. The last one says it, it goes straight through the vertex without changing its direction at all. All right, so let's see how we use this. So I've got this situation down here. Now I'm keeping in mind it's a converging lens. I draw a focus on either side, all right? So I've got a focal length, which is the distance from the vertex here to this focus, and that's the same length as on the other side. All right, first principle. In parallel, out through focus. Easy enough. In parallel, out through focus. There it is. All right, second one. In through focus, out parallel. So now I'm gonna use the fact that I've drawn a focus on the other side also. In through focus, out parallel. Now notice that these guys are already crossing right there. So I've already located my image. But the third one is just kind of to make sure that it all makes sense. So this is straight through the vertex. And that one goes through there too. So that means that my image is right here. Notice that it is inverted. It's also real. It's real because all these light rays actually go through that point. Notice that the inversion makes perfect sense. Green was on top over here. He's on bottom over here. All right? So that's the way that it works. I locate my image nice and simple. Okay. So this is with a converging lens where you're further away. Now remember, if you get closer to the converging lens than the focus, something weird happens. So let's see that something weird happen. All right, so over here, I've got another converging lens, and this time I'm closer to the lens than the focus. All right, let's see. In parallel, out through focus. Well, that's easy enough. All right, we got that one. All right, next one. In through focus, out parallel. Hmm. Well, the focus is kind of on the wrong side. So what I have to interpret that to mean is that I want the ray that looks like it was coming from the focus. Out parallel. Notice that these two rays are never going to meet on the proper side of the lens. So that's going to indicate a virtual. Let's just check that out. Well, I've got straight through. So there it is. Notice these guys really are not meeting, all right? So now what I need to do to make them meet is I need to pretend that I'm on this side of the lens, I'm looking at that light, and I wanna know what does it look like it's coming from. Not where's it actually coming from, it's actually coming from the object. Where does it look like it's coming from? Well, this red line looks like it's coming from there. This green line looks like it's coming from there. And this blue line looks like, oh, and look at that. They all look like they're coming from this location right here. This is my image location. Notice that he is erect. He is virtual because the light didn't actually go through that point, right? 
and he's magnified, he's much bigger. And of course, that's why converging lenses are used as magnifying glasses. You take any magnifying glass you want to, you feel on both sides, and you'll feel that it is indeed convex glass on both sides. Convex. So it's a converging lens. All right, now let's see what happens with diverging lenses. These are a little weird, I have to say. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too, too bad. All right, remember what the green one did. In parallel, out through focus. All right. In parallel. What does it mean, out through focus? I don't want to draw it down like that because that's not what diverging lenses do. So what we need to do is we need to write it as if it was coming from that focus. So the focus now is on this side, the focus that I'm thinking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dashed line as if it's coming. So see, that's what I mean by out through focus. It doesn't actually go through the focus. It just comes out in the direction that it would come from as if it was coming from the focus. All right, let's do blue. Blue says in through focus, out parallel. All right, in through focus. Well, which focus? Not this one. It's got to come in through this focus. So it's going to come in as if it was going to this focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line that would continue to that focus. So once it hits the lens, instead of doing that, it's going to go out parallel. All right. All right, great. So there's two of them. The last one's always the easiest. Straight through vertex. Okay, I can do that. I'm done. Right? And so now I'm looking on this side of the lens and I want to see where does it look like the light is coming from. Well, this red is fine. The blue looks like it's coming from here. The green looks like it's coming from that focus. And so therefore, I'm all done. I got my image, he's right here, all right? He is erect or upright, and he is a virtual image that is a uh, magnification less than one. It's smaller than the object. And that's the way that it goes. These diverging lenses are the most complicated ones, but they're really not that bad once you get the hang of them. What I would suggest you do is sit down with a piece of graph paper and you can make up these examples just as easily as I can. You draw two perpendicular lines and you draw an X on one side and then you make sure that you draw an X on the other side that's the same distance away. If you're doing it right, your light rays will always converge to one point. And that's ray diagrams. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two... Um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>